welcome to the new year. 2021 will be an interesting one, and I thought it appropriate to kick off the new year with something central to the mission of my channel, spreading the messages and warnings from Our Lady throughout history. I've been covering approved Catholic prophecy for the entire time I've run this channel, and I've even spoken about Our Lady of Good Success before in a previous video, but that video had an interesting effect. It led to my having a conversation with a Catholic who is rather well-connected to the priests and those who promote the messages of Our Lady. This Catholic pointed me in the right direction to find out the truth about this approved Marian apparition. And the truth is this. The real title, the real name of this appearance by the Blessed Virgin Mary is not Our Lady of Good Success, as you have been told. I'll go over all that in a moment, but when I do, and as you listen to the warning she gave, consider this. Why would her name be changed from what it really is to good success in the English language? Was it just a simple translation error? Consider that because there has to be a reason there. To end my introduction, some of the events I'm going to relay to you have already come to pass. And I'll touch on some of that at the very end. If you know the history of Ecuador, then you'll see the fingerprints of heaven in that country's history, as well as those of the stonecutters. So what is the real name of this apparition? It is not Our Lady of Good Success. In Spanish, the name is, and forgive my pronunciation, please, I'm famous for barely speaking English, let alone any other language. In Spanish, her name is Nuestra Señora del Buen Successo de la Purificación, which is better translated as Our Lady of the Good Event of the Purification. And yes, that's the only time I'll speak Spanish in this video. Some suggest that this name refers to the Feast of the Presentation and the Purification, which is an older feast representing what the Christ child endured in the temple and, and days after his birth. Perhaps, but also remember that name as we go over the message she brings, Our Lady of the Good Event of the Purification. The apparitions occurred in Quito, Ecuador from 1594 to 1634. The basic facts are this. The visionary was a conceptionist sister named Mother Mariana de Jesus Torres, who, as it was, is told, received Marian apparitions under this title from the 2nd of February, 1594, to the 2nd of February, 1634. The 2nd of February is the Candle Mass, when in the traditional Latin rite, and I would presume in the Eastern rites of the Church, the priest blesses candles with a very specific blessing unique to that feast day, which is tied to other prophecies of the Three Days of Darkness, for those interested in that, see my videos on Marie Julie Jehenny and a few others. Anyway, in 1611, a local bishop gave his approval to the apparitions that had occurred up to that point. The apparitions message predict a spiritual upheaval in the Catholic Church and in society beginning shortly after the middle of the 20th century. It would include widespread moral failing, profanation of the conjugal sacrament, depraved priests who will scandalize the faithful and cause suffering for good priests, Unbridled lust will ensnare many souls. There will be the loss of the innocence among the young and an end of modesty among, uh, among females and a lack of priestly religious vocations. Does that all sound familiar to you? Finally, for those not familiar with Marian apparitions, I sometimes see comments like, Why so many different Our Ladies? Our Lady of this, Our Lady of that. The simple is this. The vast majority of appearances of the Blessed Virgin Mary throughout history get a title that refers to the place it occurred. Our Lady of Fatima is Fatima, Portugal. Our Lady of Akita is Akita, Japan. Our Lady of Walsingham is in the United Kingdom. Our Lady of Aparecida is in Argentina, I think. All refer to the location that she appeared. Our Lady of the Good Event of the Purification is different, probably because of her message itself. And the message begins with a reference to a specific pope, one who would not reign for over 250 years after this warning was given. And that pope was Pius IX, who reigned in the mid-19th century until the 1870s, and he would do exactly what the message of Our Lady says here, and he would meet the fate also described here. Consider that if you are skeptical of approved Marian apparitions. Now, that's enough for me, the message of Our Lady of the Good Event of the Purification. The Pope's infallibility will be declared a dogma of faith by the same Pope chosen to proclaim the dogma of the mystery of my Immaculate Conception. He will be afflicted and imprisoned in the Vatican through usurpation of the pontifical states and through the malice, envy, and avarice of an earthly monarch. Unbridled passions will give way to a total undermining of customs because Satan will reign through the stonecutter sects, targeting the children in particular to ensure general depravity. Unhappy the children of those times, seldom will they receive the sacraments of baptism and confirmation. 
As for the sacrament of penance, they will confess only while attending Catholic schools, which the devil will do his utmost to destroy by means of persons in authority. The same will occur with Holy Communion. Oh, how it hurts me to tell you that there will be many and enormous public and hidden sacrileges. In those times, the sacrament of extreme unction will be largely ignored. Many will die without receiving it, being thereby deprived of innumerable graces, consolation, and strength in the great leap from time to eternity. The conjugal sacrament, which symbolizes the union of Christ with the church, will be thoroughly attacked and profaned. The stonecutters, then reigning, will implement iniquitous laws aimed at extinguishing the sacrament. They will make it easy for all to live in sin, thus multiplying the birth of children outside of the conjugal sacrament without the church's blessing. Secular education will contribute to a scarcity of priests and religious vocations. The holy sacrament of holy orders will be ridiculed, subverted, and despised, for in this both the church and God himself are suppressed and reviled, since he is represented by his priests. The devil will work to persecute the ministers of the Lord in every way, working with baneful cunning to destroy the spirit of their vocation and dirtying many. Those who will thus scandalize the Christian flock will bring upon all priests the enmity, enmity of wicked Christians and the enemies of the one, holy, Roman, Catholic, and apostolic church. This apparent triumph of Satan will cause enormous suffering to the good pastors of the church and to the supreme pastor and vicar of Christ on earth, who, a prisoner in the Vatican, will shed secret and bitter tears in the presence of, our, of God our Lord, asking for light, sanctity, and perfection for all the clergy of the world, to whom he is king and father. Unhappy times will come wherein those who should fearlessly defend the rights of the church will instead be blinded despite the light, give their hand to the church's enemies, and do their bidding. But when evil seems triumphant and when authority misuses its power, committing all manner of injustice and controlling the weak, their ruin shall be near. They will fall and crash to the ground. Then will the church, joyful and triumphant like a young girl, reawaken and be comfortably cradled in the arms of my most dear and elect son of those times. If he lends an ear to the inspiration of grace, one of which will be the reading of these great mercies that my son and I have toward you, we shall fill him with graces and very special gifts, and will make him great on earth and much greater in heaven. Then we have reserved this precious seat for him, because, heedless of men, he will have fought for truth and ceaselessly defended the rights of the church deserving to be called martyr. At the end of the 19th century and throughout a great part of the 20th, many heresies will be propagated in these lands. The small number of souls will be secretly safe, will secretly safeguard the treasure of faith, and virtue will suffer a cruel, unspeakable, and long martyrdom. Many will descend to their graves through, through, the suffering, for through suffering and will be counted among the martyrs, who sacrifice themselves for the country and the church. To be delivered from the servitude of these heresies, those whom the merciful love of my son has destined for this restoration will need great willpower, perseverance, courage, and confidence in God. To try the faith and trust of these just ones, there will be times when all will seem lost and paralyzed. It will then be the be happy beginning of the complete restoration. In those times, the atmosphere will be saturated with the spirit of impurity, which like a filthy sea will engulf the, engulf the streets and public places with incredible license. Innocence will scarcely be found in children, or modesty in women. He who should speak seasonably will remain silent. There shall be scarcely any virgin souls in the world. The delicate flower of virginity will seek refuge in the cloisters. Without it, fire from heaven will be needed to purify these lands. Sex, having permeated all social classes, will find ways of introducing themselves into the very heart of homes to corrupt the innocents. The innocent hearts will be dainty morsels to regale the devil. Religious communities will remain to sustain the church and work with courage for the salvation of souls. The secular clergy will fall for far short of what is expected of them because they will not pursue their sacred duty. Losing the divine compass, they will stray from the way of priestly ministry mapped out for them by God and will become devoted to money, seeking it too earnestly. Pray constantly, implore tirelessly, and weep bitter tears in the seclusion of your heart, beseeching the Eucharistic heart of my Most Holy Son to take pity on his ministers and to end as soon as possible these unhappy times by sending to his church the prelate who will restore the spirit of her priests. And that is the message of what is properly named Our Lady of the Good Event of the Purification. Please help correct the misnaming of this apparition to other Catholics. Do it, your do your do it yourself by talking to them, or share this video with them, or Buy good books on the subject if you can find one that explains how and why this happened. The YouTube channel Vox Catholica has a series of conference talks 
given by priests in Quito on the topic of this Marian apparition. If the message sounds familiar, if the words here of Our Lady sound familiar and especially applicable to our times, then they should. The papal encyclicals that I covered from the mid-19th through the early 20th century all describe these heresies the Church tried to correct. Modernism, the synthesis of all heresies, as defined by Pope St. Pius X in his landmark encyclical Pascendi, and that mid-20th century event was almost certainly the Second Vatican Council, influenced, as she says, by the stonecutters, which they have since bragged about. What else could it be? But as she says here, when it appears that all is lost, that will be the beginning of the happy restoration. So do not lose hope, and do not lose focus. Keep your eyes fixed on the cross. Keep your eyes fixed towards heaven. If you want to go deeper, I'll have a link to the first Keto Conference talk from Vox Catholica in my show notes at returntotradition.org, where I keep all my sources to be preserved for the future. I chose this apparition to start the new year, on a feast day no less, not to bring you down but to give you hope, where this message speaks of hope, of a good event of the purification of the church and therefore of the world. That event is coming. Pray that it happens soon. Other messages of Our Lady provide the roadmap for achieving that. But I'm curious what you think of all of this. Let me know in the comments, please, and as always, pray for the Church. Our Lady of the Good Event of the Purification, pray for us. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.